you know, our racers are, they keep getting better and better every year. So it's been 20. Surely there's a few things I can pick up here. <laughs> <laughs> if you went back and watched a NASCAR race from the glory days of the late 1980s, Lake Speed is a name that you would see. We showed you his entire race shop. That's still in his backyard where he has two cars left and two engines. They have not been touched in 20 years. He made us a deal. He said, you know what? You take that engine, get it freshened up, make it make some more power, put it back in the car and I'll drive it again. And he's 75 years old. The modernized Ford C3 NASCAR engine is ready to go. It makes 780 horsepower. And the last time Lake drove this car 20 years ago, it only made about 480. The objects to run faster than we did last time I was there, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been working on in here? We got the brakes sent off. So Brimbo's doing them for me. My old buddy Jim Long is going to come do the shocks for me. I got the shocks off for him. He's coming to do that this week. I'm fixing to take the seat belts and all that stuff out, look them over. Sam's checking out here, see if we can update something else a little bit. Is he used to work here? I worked with Lake at Melling Racing when he was a uh, driver there. So this was the actual pit cart that he was using back in the day. Everything's labeled, they got little dividers riveted in there. That's freaking sweet. I'm taking notes on that. Keep bumping against that bush and it'll probably come out. For the it ain't gone. I don't believe it. That's yeah. why I didn't put anything blue in it because it wouldn't go in there. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon you're right. That's probably why I probably did all I could do with what I had. What did this car used to be before you road raced it? Last time I remember running with it, uh, I think it was the 600 at Charlotte. Killer fast. And, uh, the, car was, the car was originally built as a speedway car. So it's a straight up car. It wasn't offset. So it made a really good race road race car too. Huh. <laughs> so it's had it's had a couple of two or three three different lives. It, it was I think it started out if I remember right. I think it was an Oldsmobile first, and then went to a Chevrolet body on it, and then a Ford body. Huh. Uh, I don't remember the Chevy era. Yeah, was that pretty quick? Yeah, just a couple of races. Couldn't get any cylinder heads, uh, so that that ended that. That's we, we changed over to Ford when we could get current race stuff. So this isn't a Hopkins car or a Laughlin, or this is this was built right in this building. Yep, right there. How would you identify this car? Like, does it have a number on it somewhere? Of no, it's just got a name, Job. Job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where did where did that come from? <laughs> I don't know. Probably my wife probably put it on there. Just thinking, Job. Job. Been through a lot. <laughs> yeah. Is that what? Went through a lot. Biblical. See, I saw that, and I thought it said job two and then i noticed there was a line over it and i was yeah. like what is job number two i thought that was like a you know job build something yeah, right. but that's its yeah. name it's job no, 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 yeah. <laughs> been a veteran been a veteran a good one for us is there a job number one because i don't remember that it just says job number two on it job just might have been number two <laughs> been the second one he built <laughs> you, did, Wait, you didn't notice your name on all, all over yeah yeah i was really here uh, push the yeah, uh... we're looking at it too it's amazing. <laughs> Golly. oblivious of thinking about all this stuff i need to do <laughs> check this out that is super super cool total seal i know i love it well the the contingency decals i think are like the coolest part of this whole thing I spent a lot of time Good. making the contingency decals right. I mean, that's awesome. As, as a kid, I used to love collecting all those things. I'd like go to the racetrack and I'd like put them on my legs and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> when I was little, you know? And I thought that was the cool, the stickers are the coolest thing, right? And this is amazing to see all those little ones on there. Well, speaking of when you were little, I referenced that shirt you were wearing back in. Oh, well, you're right. Yeah, for the, yeah. this. Yeah, I that kind part, of used yeah. that and the checkered flag was and. Yeah, that was from the, uh, the Nationwide Auto Parts car. That was yeah. 85 or 86 in that picture. Yeah. Probably yeah. 85. You were like little kid in that picture. I was like 13, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all the contingency decals and stuff. Oh, yeah. And I have another shirt to wear. Or steal Did, from you. No, no. And wear. no I, I, I actually have your own, right? So <laughs> it's not as small as it when you told me about the t shirts, I made sure I ordered enough for everybody. A pressurized oh, deal here. Put on the pop it up, just push pressure, pushes the fluid through. What'd you make that out of? A piece of aluminum and 
this is a pressure chester we use to pressure check two cycle engines to make sure that the crankcase doesn't leak. If the crankcase is leaking on a two cycle, it really well, can make the engines run too lean. Huh. So you have to, after you build an engine, you always pressure check them. That's it. Yeah, right all right. You need to ease it down just a little bit. You can go down more now. The pan's clear of the cowl. Oh, something's coming. Pull it towards the left side of the car a little bit because you really get yeah. close to the oil fitting over there. Take this oil line loose over here to get it in. The one that's on the side, halfway up the oil pan. Well, if you remember from the engine dyno video, Dennis, the promoter, went on this big thing about how he made a thing to connect the piston squirters to this oil pan that weren't being used before when we were getting ready to mock things up and i noticed it's like hey this thing's got sprayers in it looked back on the cart looked at the block there were no lines on the cart there was no provisions on the block we basically ran line ran the lines back inside the pan this is the supply it'll come through here inside of it we supply oil to that manifold right there and it crosses over and supplies it to this one that's what's in the way so <laughs> this thing right here yep we're going to pull the pan off and see how easy it is to weld a new bung up here where it won't be in the way of the cross member. Dennis was so proud of that too. <laughs> so I took the pan home with me. Most of you people watching these NASCAR videos probably have no idea that we know what we're doing and build cars and that I used to fabricate things before I started making YouTube videos. Lake doesn't even know that, but he's about to find out because I'm going to cut this bung out and move it up here so it doesn't hit the frame rail anymore. What I'm gonna do is flip this drill bit inside out or replace it with a rod. That way I can use it to cut this out without the drill bit screwing up the threads in there. We're gonna reuse this entire bung. And if you're wondering where all the racket is over here, it is Logan working on her car. She can weld and do all that stuff too. And I bet you had no idea that that was a thing either. Now you do. This is her project. I have not helped her with any of the fabricating, cutting, or welding. She's spent more time using the MIG welder than I have. So I'm gonna have to borrow that drill. I'll just use the grinder. Okay, cool. My wrist is tired of drilling. <laughs> yeah, you're not mailing your arm anywhere. She screwed it up cutting the torque box apart. So the plastic is to keep the brace clean. There's metal shots. <laughs> There will be videos on this on the channel coming soon. This is kind of like a sneak peek, I guess. And this uh, R5P7 Dodge engine is for my car that I'm putting together racing Grand National Super Series. And you can find videos about that too. There we go. I fixed the pan, we got the engine back in, and now we're getting prepared for the first startup of the refreshed engine in the car for the first time in 20 years. Start it and let it run just for a very little bit. Didn't check anything and everything. For the levels. Levels. Check all the levels. levels. Yep. It's been a long time. Long time coming here, this thing running this car. <laughs> he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> all right, Lord Jesus, please have all this stuff to work right. Make sure that your ignition comes on late, because so uh, make sure I've got this on yet. Yeah. Well, that came on. <laughs> How about your tag? That's a, That's a brake pedal, ain't it? Uh, I don't know. We had to do some work on the brakes, so yeah. it got moved around. Huh. <laughs> All right, y'all ready to start this thing? Yeah, go ahead and start it. Yeah, then we can come back. I guess I got to give it throttle a little bit. I don't think the fuel's gotten up there yet. No. Nope. We have no fuel pressure. Try that. Got a little feel for it right now. Is you getting a
gonna... feel. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> There's something different about this. My primary concern now is which one of these boom tubes is he gonna want to stick on here? I want to start putting that on right now. But I know there's other pressing issues at hand. I don't like it running a little rough. Yeah, I thought it was missing a little bit too. What is that you're using in there? That's a VP Late Model Plus. So I talked to Freddie Terza, who's one of the engineer R&D kind of guys at uh, VP. And because the old fuel cell had ran with the old Sunoco uh, Supreme, you know, a non-oxygenated fuel, and everything was great in good condition, he said, don't use an oxygenated fuel. When we dynoed it, we ran the Q16. Well, that's oxygenated fuel. That could tear up the stuff. So we use right octane fuel, right to make a what the setup is, but it's the right chemistry of fuel so it doesn't cause issues with all those things. Interesting. Yeah. Is it, is it still leaded? Oh, it's still leaded, yeah. So about the same octane as the Q16. This is 114 versus 116. But this engine is going to be this fine. So Frankie and the guys at Pro Motor dynoed it with this carburetor, with this fuel, and got it set up for it, timing wise and everything, um, so that we could just put this right in and just go run it. So what are you trying to figure you out call, right now? You call me fat. Not fat, you're just larger than I I should have turned the We're camera on sooner. Shake it down. <laughs> One eighth over. Yeah. One eighth high. Can you explain what you were doing for somebody who doesn't know what that is for? Which thing? The frame heights and well, this, all that. The frame heights and everything is your, your ground clearance is the biggest thing. You're closer to the ground, you're all the better the car's going to be. But you can't be dragging the ground, obviously, either. But uh, getting, the, getting the frame heights so that you don't drag, but you're close. And then getting the, uh, the wedge in the car is just for balance. To turn So you're just as tight turning right as you are left. And then you get to the racetrack and you start running on the track. Then if there's a place that you're too loose or too tight, then you adjust from there. But this is just to get you a baseline. And basically what we're trying to do is have the car neutral. Same way, you know, turn this, have the same grip both directions when you go, start out. And you wanted to find the build heights of the chassis so you knew what center What we was. were doing before, but I don't mind, I'm pretty sure. You want to set it to where the car is built to run. Right. And right. If these frame heights are five in the front, five in the back, then the suspension points and everything are meant to run with that frame at that height, and that's our starting point, basically. But then all the other measurements can be done. You can't just drop it as low as you want because then your camber curve and all that's yeah. going to be Everything's wrong. Everything affected. Camber, caster, Toe, everything's affected by that. It drove really good last time it was out, so we want to put it back where it was before. Really good One thing time. you gotta remember <laughs> it though, good every time we it's gonna be quite a bit more throaty next time. Yeah, it'll have a little more. So daddy is gonna have more to hold on to this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think he's kind of excited about that part too. I think you're right. <laughs> put seat belts in this baby. Some fresh belts. Get a lot of fresh stuff here for old Job. What's going on in your mind, like preparing to do all of this for the first time in such a long time? Uh, it's just I'm trying to remember everything, you know, it's one of the things and just uh, it's cool to be able to go back and relive some of your past experiences. This has been a good car here. This sucker's got a lot of history with me and uh, giving it a little freshen up, mm -hmm. tuned up gonna be better than ever. Are you more nervous or confident that as soon as you pull out there everything's just gonna come right back? Oh, so I'm not worried about me any. Now whether or not we got the car <laughs> back to where it's supposed to be, that's you know that could be an issue. But, you know, we're, we're doing, like I said, you're having to come back and remember uh, stuff that you did for 20 years worth. So uh, most of it's coming back pretty good. I think. As you've like been doing stuff does stuff come back to you like once you start getting yeah, into yeah, the motion yeah it's like doing the setup of the night you know i was sitting there doing all the screw jack screw jack screw jack messing around and measuring frame heights and all that stuff then all of a sudden heck don't like then i remember exactly what to do and didn't take five seconds hardly we were done that's interesting <laughs> how that works yeah yeah just when you remember 
how you had done it in the past, the easy way, the right way, like instead you, of trying to figure it out again, you know. Like so you get your that, mind on that track and then it, it pulls yeah. the file. Oh yeah, it was just all of a sudden it, a file showed up and it was like, oh, we'll be done with it. I thought this chick changed and said, just, no, take shocks loose, we'll have this done in just a minute. And sure enough, it was done. Well, what's happening back here? Oh, we're just checking fluid levels, uh, making sure everything's snug as it should be. Has it been? So far, so good. That's good. I brought a microphone so you can do your best uh, Days of Thunder barn scene impression. Yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> we need to do that one. I told Chambers, I said, we want to do that, I need to have a we got to get a menu of all the things that were changed <laughs> so yeah. we can you know, share that with Do it right. Okay, Job, got you all fixed up now. Just go out here and shine. I'm gonna need the <coughs> nut drivers, a yellow handle nut driver. That'll give you a little support. That things sort of just pop really together. Well, being little does help. Yeah. <laughs> Get in there? Small washer. Yeah, that one's too big. Do what? The one, the one we got, that washer was too big. It wouldn't. It wouldn't go down in there. No. So it's adjustable. That that fitting there is so it can swivel. Oh, okay. To go wherever you want it to go. So they've got the tailgate up off the ground now. Yeah. Otherwise, it tear the rubbers off the back. Hold on. All right, we're going too fast now. I know what you got. No, I got some bigger straps. Oh, straps. Pushing that thing in there was, uh, I didn't think that was going to work. <laughs> that was like some serious torque to get, that, glad you get were... that up over the yeah, lake. Yeah, yeah. In the late 80s, lake speed racing almost went under. A lack of sponsorship looked like the team was going to die. All we did was take a real strong organization and bleed it to death until PRX came out of nowhere and saved the day. Think of all the moments in motorsports that wouldn't happen if your favorite driver sponsor just disappeared. If I'm at the grocery store or the parts store or the wherever store buying something, I will buy the brand that has a motorsports affiliation even if I don't like the driver they sponsor. All I'm saying is it makes sense to support brands that support things that you like. I wear a Pennzoil hat a lot. You see their stuff around here. I collect sheet metal and that kind of thing. They're a big supporter of this channel and they're the coolest freaking people of any sponsor that we've ever had. Especially when they got a killer product too. Like this Dodge R5 P7 I'm putting in my race car back here. This is a legitimate former Cup Series engine of the early 2000s and I'm gonna run straight off the shelf Pennzoil Ultra Platinum 0W40 in it. At the recommendation of Lake Speed Jr. himself, he had done his own testing and he recommended it. He said this would be perfect for that. And I said, really? I didn't know that. I thought, you know, race engines gotta have some fancy race oil that you have to buy you know, through some other thing. It's not the store, not, not here. So next time your oil light comes on, you think of us. You think of Lake Speed getting back in his car. You think about all the videos you've watched on this channel that you've enjoyed. You grab that yellow bottle and you dump it in your engine and you feel good about it. Next time you change your oil, if you get some Penn's oil and put it in there, put it on your Instagram story and tag me. I'll share it. Almost one year later from the day we took that engine out of there and put it on the dyno at Pro Motor, the car is finally at VIR and Lake Speed is about to drive it again for the first time in 20 years. Two. Three. How are you feeling? Apprehensive just to see, uh, to me going out shaking down. And all that. I'm not sure I want to go out immediately because a lot of the guys that go out immediately are going to try to go hard as they can right off the bat. And I don't want to be in the way. Well, I'm just shaking one down and not up fully up to speed. So we're just now about seven minutes into that session. Okay. Probably started up now and it'll be warming up while I get this going. Absolutely.
coming down Vent Road. Well, how's it feel? So you can feel that extra power. <laughs> All right. Off that, tell that tree turn down there. She is bad yeah. to the bone now. Yeah. Night and day since last oh, time. God. Yeah. <laughs> the one that Yates had for me at, at uh, Watkins Glen was really strong, like this one here. But this one made me even stronger. I, I, mean, this, I hadn't really juiced it hard. <laughs> you know, just really got up there. I, oh, that's that's shifting it below eight. Just got to get used to the racetrack. As to what what I can do and what I can't do. That's the main coming back. You know, the go kart you can drive that thing on in the corner. I know that you can't with this. So I'm <laughs> I'm, having, I'm being very careful, <laughs> sneaking up on it just a little bit at a time and. Uh, my my uh, synchronizing my shifting with the downshift I was struggling with that uh, usually I could do it with never even touching the clutch you know but I was having a hard time with meshing uh, second and first getting them to go and anyway then I just started using the clutch you know just trying to feel out how much grip the thing has getting used to that without getting in trouble with the uh, you know, the main thing. Yeah. Never slipped. So that was good. Compared to the go kart, it sure did flop around a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to be able to hold it wide up very long because you're going to run out of racetrack here really quick. We're back here for the main day. Uh, multiple runs going to be made today. Still learning how to use all these freaking microphones, so take it easy on me. I'm not an AV guy, I'm a car guy that picked up a camera. But we're doing our best. See, I realized yesterday that just having this microphone on here facing the back didn't work. So I have to have another one that's right here pointed forward. What did you learn yesterday that you're gonna apply today? Oh, main thing is I can be able to see where I'm going. That's important. <laughs> I can see better out of here, because yesterday it was kind of like driving in a fog. Being able to see will make be able to do your depth perception and everything a lot better. That was, that was the problem I was having was with just depth perception because I couldn't see clearly. And then also I couldn't see out the back real good and I didn't know if somebody was close to me or not close to me. I was having to be extremely careful. There you go, silver green groove now, to the grid. Now things should be a lot better. Where did this engine peak at? Uh, Is it eight, eight something? Uh, that's what yeah. Chambers said eight was where it, it started falling off after eight, but it sure doesn't feel like it. Keep going. <laughs> it, it didn't fall off much. It don't if it's not off falling much. off, keep running it up. It sounds better. Yeah. <laughs> the reality is we have no idea what it really would have peaked at because, you know, Frankie, the moment it starts to drop off, he just pulls the handle back. <laughs> so if it, could, it could have been like dipping and then gone again. We would have no idea. That's, that makes sense. Well, I'm hoping whenever I go sit up on the long straightaway back there yeah. that you'll go as far as the chip will let you because we want to hear it scream i'll show you on the map there a track map you know exactly where to go okay we're all about sounds here absolutely and unfortunately this car does not have boom tubes on it i know it's killing you it is killing me i feel <laughs> i feel violated that we did all of this and it does not have boom tubes on it like boom tubes in the big long side pipes. Oh yeah. So he went up to McClure's and did a thing with Larry uh -huh. and with uh, Sterling's uh, 500 car right. with the X pipes on that and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why did you take the boom tube off of this car? Ground clearance. All right, you well, everyone's run, just gonna have to, have to accept that. You have that. to ride, drive, ride, run the car up higher if you got the pipes underneath the frame. Now, if you, were, if you were doing it, I got the guys later raised the frame rails so that, you know, they could still get the car down. But this didn't have raised frame rails in it. So, <laughs> so we just did away with the boob tubes. <laughs> <laughs>
I mean, it, it makes sense. I'm just sad about it. I know. But I know. and anybody watching this who's sad about it, you can be sure that I will be using all the different kinds of boom tubes on my own car when I get that put together with the Dodge engine. Right. So you, you have full. It's coming. Yeah. You can do all the sounds. Yeah. With your car. Yeah. It's kind of funny when it because of the H pipe dumps on this thing. When he was sitting there idling yesterday, when I'm standing behind it, I could close my eyes and I'm at a drag strip listening to a nitrous fox body. Like <laughs> it just the I guess the profile of maybe like a nitrous small block and yeah. this engine are probably very similar. Yeah. So the the idle small block Fords. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So if you have like a rowdy nitrous small block Ford, you could put a boom tube on it. It'd probably sound like an old cup car. Somebody should try that been out of a race car for all these years you forget how much motion is in the car how much the car actually moves rolls when you go into the corner you know been in full of the go-karts for the last 20 years and they're back to bone stock i mean nothing everything is really quick and you know, there's no movement in the chassis your internal guts say when the car rolls over uh oh this could be a problem <laughs> If it's rolling over on a go-kart, you're in big trouble. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, just trying to get back to feeling where to go. I don't know, Cody, so it's going to roll, but then it's going to catch. And then, you know, getting that confidence back, okay, is, is it going to catch? Yeah. And that's, that's the big part of it right there. Right? Notice from the in-car footage of how much your hands are moving on the wheel, and then you're in a go-kart, and you're like going like this. You can't see your hands move. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can't hit them. So that, that's part of it, too. First gear turn there, and you are literally hauling the mail when you get down here. This is a kind of a rise about right here. Which, what part of the track is your favorite? Favorite? Like what's the most fun? Right now, that motor, this is the most fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most fun right there. Back in the day when you were racing against cars with 100 horsepower more than you, where did you make up your ground at? From right there to right there. Everything else except that spot. Yeah. <laughs>
Or smoke still. Yeah, it was a What happened? Uh, they said the brakes were too hot. They could see them glowing when they was coming into the corners, and they said, hey, out. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you first. Down the okay? Yeah, did you think it was good enough? <laughs> yeah, it was going down the straightaway pretty good. Did you see me standing on my roof? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were standing on your roof? Yeah, I stood on the roof of the truck. Yeah. You get the best seat in the house. Nobody there. You know what RPM you were at when you were coming by me? I was at 8,000 when I shifted in the high. I think you shifted either like right before me or right after me. I, I was too busy enjoying the experience. It depends, on, it depends on how I got off the corner. A couple of times I spun the tires coming off the corner in first gear there. I saw you. Yeah. You were you were wheeling times, it. A couple of times I did that. And then I started doing the little, you know, calm down there a little bit. Didn't throttle it so hard. Going forward still. I was going a lot faster that time than I was yesterday. That's for sure. I would highly recommend watching from over there at least once just to hear that thing go by. Okay. It is like, it is like, I don't know. You can understand why NASCAR was so popular back then in a world where people didn't have all this dopamine around them. You show up to a place like this and 43 of these things go whizzing by you. It's like, it's like an out of body experience. Oh, yeah. Just one of them was making me like, man, this is great. I love this. This time I went to Daytona, when you drove, in You'd go tunnel, you'd come into the tunnel, you came inside, and there was a bunch of cars practicing. It's like the earth shaking. I mean, you, you feel it, the percussion, and you, you, it was unreal. There's a sound coming through there with that cold like nothing you've ever experienced in your life. And I'm sure that had a lot to do with why the people were in the grandstands. I replaced all the brake lines in the, in, the, in the car, and they were all hard, hard steel lines. And when we put the car, put the engine in, the valve cover, you know, you had the engine up at a big angle, you must have hit that line and, and bent it enough to pinch it. Not completely pinched, but enough so that when you push on the pedal, the, the brake works, but it will return. They happen to have this convenient parts store here with enough of the right stuff to probably make it work. You have a shorter line? Like a, I come out of the trailer and like Junior said, we're done. You want to see why? Okay, yeah. Tell me why. Are you sure they don't have something over there? Let, let's go check. There may be many things, but a quitter is not one of them. Absolutely not. <laughs> no. I'm glad that, and you know, it just makes it a little more entertaining. <laughs> we didn't stage this either. No, this is a real day at the racetrack. This is what racetrack, like, real racing is all about. You're going to show up, something's going to be broken, and you're going to have to figure out a way to fix it. If you're not already familiar with this, this video is the culmination of a series of several videos about the engine that's in this car. If you haven't seen those, you need to go click on the channel icon. You can find a playlist called Lake Speed Thunderbird Resurrection. All that stuff is on there. And on the rest of the channel is a bunch of other NASCAR and racing history videos that are honestly very similar to this one. So if you like this kind of stuff, you would love the rest of our videos. It also helps to interact with stuff, so if you leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, we want to know what you hear. I read basically all of them, answer as many as I can, so why don't you leave something down there, let me know what you're thinking, and test me to see if I will apply to you. I'm going to say probably this little scratch right here is probably from the engine going in, and it did that. And the thing is, I mean, you're just checking to make sure it has brakes? Yes, it had brakes. Yeah. It just had too much brakes. It's looking like something may be able to be cobbled together to make this work, but it won't be pretty. You know, in the olden days, a cobbler made shoes, but today it's a brake line. <laughs> Absolutely. Now this feels like going to the racetrack again. So we're going to end up with a, about a two foot line yep. to replace one that was about six inches before. Yeah, But all it has to do is get from A to B and the brake pad won't know the difference. No, they don't. That's the beauty of hydraulics. Engine in the paddock, first call, blue group, 10 minutes, blue group, 10 minutes. Hold on, water, you get. Now I moved over to the back area by the bridge. He's coming through here right now. Thought he was. Oh, he's still getting warmed up, that's why. Here he comes.
That didn't sound good. Oh, he stopped right there. What the heck? That's bad. Okay, flagman season, that's good. I'm gonna have to go land this drone. I'm not qualified to operate these many cameras at the same time. Learning the benefits of this thing, now I could just fly the drone over there. Now we can see uh, the tow truck process and all that. I'll use this B-roll. I will use this as B-roll later whenever Lake is explaining to us in the trailer what happened to the car. Which I'm really curious about, what the heck happened to the car? Because he was coming through down there pretty good and then we just heard it stumble a little bit and then he was stuck right there and there's a hawk flying around near this drone right now i don't know if he's going to try to eat it but maybe i should park it do birds attack drones that's a sucky feeling now we gotta find out what the heck happened running and just died so i'm like okay well if he was running and just died that would be running out of gas maybe he could have lost power or like loose loose wire or something Brakes locked, locked up and up stopped so much it. it would it just drug it down to a stop. Oh, all right. Okay. Okay. I, I, it was still smoking coming around those corners over there when you when you were on your on your out lap. It's you know it's just not releasing the brakes. No, so are going tight, but it's not releasing. There's something else. Wrong. So something else wrong with the calipers or something uh, somewhere. Calipers something or the needs... master cylinder or whatever. And uh, luckily the guys all they had was some vice grips and some big old pliers, and I cracked the bleeder and fluid shot out of it. Yeah. Know, and tighten it back down, and it rolls. <laughs> now that on, is... They was wanting to put it on the... Roll back? It roll, not on the roll back. They had a wrecker with some cables hanging down. Oh, like, no. No, no, give me something to undo this bleeder. You know, I know if I was undo the bleeder, I'm getting bleeder. The brakes are locked up. Do what? The brakes are locked up. You got a... Uh, Allen, I mean, uh, Back one's locked up or just the front? I don't know. It just took a good stop. And I can just restart the motor and it won't move. But if I got an Allen wrench, I'm not an Allen wrench, a little uh, follow me around in case it stops again. So. Oh, you late speed? Yes, sir. They answered earlier who was driving their car because they said they ain't been in like 20 cars in 20 years. <laughs> nice speed to them, bro. Thank you. Back to shop. Yeah. We tried. Well, it was fun. When it started bogging down, I thought the motor's blowing up. You know, if I could give it some gas, it wouldn't get any better, you know? Yeah. What's happening? Then I realized this, no, this is brakes that are doing again. I started moving off off this line. Yeah. And got off almost, uh, oh, I got off the lane. Yeah, yeah, and I like to bend even further over, but yeah. it, it just went, ooh, ooh, and just stopped. And after I sat there, I thought, maybe that they cool off, maybe I can start it up and move it. That's all that's wrong with it. Started right up. Good bridge. So what happens now? Is uh, Job going to go back on under the cover and be back retired, or is he going to get fixed and come back out? I don't know. We'll just have to watch and see. I, I want to figure out what's happened with this brake situation first. Do you want Job to come back? Leave a comment. Well, this project from conception to reality took a little bit over a year and it involved a lot of people. I think you probably remember all of them, maybe better than I would. Yeah, I'll do my best, right? So, first off, Dennis Borum and the entire crew at Pro Motor went way above and beyond. I mean, the amount of time they put into this engine and the other engine, I mean, it's it, they did a fantastic job. This thing is a rocket. Never, never had an engine like that. 
Dennis knows what he's doing. Yeah. yeah this is a almost 800 horsepower C3. It, it's up 100 horsepower from where it was when it was built by a really good engine builder 20 years ago. So that whole project was, was great. Uh, but it, inside the engine, is uh, not just what Dennis and his guys put together, uh, Billy Godbold, uh, Chris Potter, all those guys at Comp Cam, I mean, they, that valve train was them. John Callies at Morrell got us the Black Mamba lifter, so that valve train's you know all freshened up because of those guys. Uh, obviously, uh, CP Pistons helped us out, get the Pistons to be able to match our total seal rings, and of course, I'm kind of biased towards my 0 .7, 0 .7 millimeter gas ported rings. You know, they're kind of cool, All right? Uh, well, Goodyear, I mean, uh, Greg Sucker, the guys at Goodyear gave us free tires, you know, to go out there and, and be able to do this, because that's no small cost, and then, you know, a guy like Sam Allen came and put all of his time in to help us. You helped too? Yeah. I did. Yeah. If it yeah. wouldn't happen without you welding that old pan. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we'd still be uh, right. shooting for November. Or right. Pending weather, maybe 2024. Right. So, no, it was great. This has been a really fun project getting all of these different people together. So many people have been asking about it. Yeah. I can't thank you enough. Oh, no, this has been fun. This is cool to see you get back in the track and be able to go out there and do it again you know you won't find every day <laughs> the shop you know, think about stuff like that you never expected it to come back to life be able to get out of here much less at all much less something which is just really fast you know so it's really cool that's a lot a lot of what like what I think about in terms of you know the, the value provided of these videos is not only for the people watching or me because I enjoy it but it's the, the people in them just like you like you, you walk by this thing every day and maybe you never would have bothered to put it together again and so without that one comment you made just offhand none of this would have happened and it's it's been cool for me to witness just like the the family memories being made um, while this is this is happening like you know working on a race car with grandpa like I, I never got those that stuff my grandpa didn't race in nascar and he wasn't even around long enough to ever show me how to work on anything but just to see that and to know that it's all planted from the seed of the is youtube and the people who watch it because if you guys weren't watching this stuff i wouldn't be able to make these videos and we wouldn't be able to do any of this no so no because people watch we can do this, and I'm thankful for people to watch because this has been a, a lot of fun. I've, I've enjoyed this. I wouldn't trade anything or change anything about it because it's been a great experience. Dream maker. And it's not over yet. Yeah, that's, certainly is. that's what, what, what it's all about. You dream about doing something like this, but you know that it's probably never going to happen. And y'all made it happen. Oh, it's cool. You made it happen too. You could have said, "I don't want to. I don't want to mess my car up." Or I've heard that before. I don't so, want to work all my hours. Larry. <laughs> but that's all right. This <laughs> seems to be us. Yeah. The way you do that. Yeah. <laughs> of course, I knew almost every nut and bolt on it, so it was pretty familiar. With it, so. And it's it's even cooler that all this was done in the same building where it was originally built from scratch. I don't know if you would ever find that combination anywhere else. Same old surface plate, same everything. Nothing. You couldn't, like, like Lake Speed Racing was literally revived. Yeah. Come back to it. Yeah. <laughs> Which you can find at stapletonautoworks.com. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Shameless shirt plug. Yeah. <laughs> if you order one of these shirts, we ship first come, first serve. We don't have a ton of them in stock right now. If we sell out of what we have quickly, we will order more and then yours will be shipped in probably three weeks or something from the time that we have to order more. If that happens, we'll send you an email, but just know you could either get it in a few days or you could get it in a few weeks, depending if you wait or not. And we usually only reorder something one time before it's gone forever because we can't afford to keep every shirt we've ever made in stock all the time. So if you see something you like on the website, like these hats, if you wait on it, it may be gone and it will never come back. That's stapletonautoworks.com. You can find the link in the description and in the pinned comment. Logan will pack your order when she's not working on her car. She's been so busy trying to get this thing ready that uh, I've been packing the orders again. And if I pack your order, you'll know because the handwriting on the card that we put in there will be terrible.
you know, I'd be lying if I said I was a little bit disappointed with how this turned out because not only a mechanical fear was frustrating, I put a lot more effort into the video production side of this track recording and almost none of it made any difference. I bought a 360 GoPro and that's what was doing the dash recording, but I forgot that there was a normal GoPro mode and it was not on 360 mode, so I couldn't show you what was happening in front of the car. So it ended up looking the same. Brought the drone, didn't use it until the third session, which ended up lasting about five minutes because of the brake issue. And the audio, I had like four really awesome flybys from that super long backstretch, but for some reason, the microphone jack was like not plugged in the whole way and it was totally silent. And you know, I had this like real, you know, kind of emotional moment where I had goosebumps on my arms and I was just like, oh, this, you know, reflecting on the way it sounds and all that and silent, gone, nothing, totally lost, lost the moment. And then I'm just like, you freaking kidding me. But that's the way it goes. I don't think this is the end for Job. Not the end for me trying to make better videos either. And it's not the end for Logan working on her car. She's got her headphones on and she has no idea that I'm freaking filming anything right now. Which is also why she wasn't at the track. She was working on her car. You guys are awesome. We appreciate you. Leave a comment, let us know. Tell us about yourself, tell us who you are, how you got interested in motorsports, how you found this channel. That's what I really wanna know. How did you find us and what keeps you coming back? That's the kind of information that I can use to help make better videos for you guys. All right, let's get this thing exported so you guys can watch it.